is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Hey, yes, hour number two, and I promised you that Alex Winley would be joining us. A A W underscore nineteen ninety eight. You can catch her work there at the Bleacher Report, ninety minutes U.S., and of course the Heron Report or the Heron's Nest, that is. And we'll talk about that so you can subscribe after. Uh, Alex, good afternoon. Thank you for taking some time. Thanks for having me on. I was just looking at the MLS, MLS playoff schedule here. My my apologies. But, yes, thank you for having me on. Yeah, and uh, I, I got to tell you, I am so jacked for tomorrow because, well, one, that was an embarrassing game the last time they played them. Uh, you're not going to play them with Messi. Uh, so, uh, you got to somehow try to see if you can win this one without Messi and send the, send a nice message. But, uh, I don't think that South Florida in general really understands how big of a game this is to, on Saturday night. Yeah, I think honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say this game is the, the big one. Yes, they can qualify for the playoffs, but it's more so them. Um, not about, it's not even that for me about qualifying for the playoffs. It's about the rivalry now. It's about oh. the challenge of Cincinnati of overcoming that. You know, because that that that's we've kind of, we've got a we've kind of seen that right this season so far. It looks like it's going to be those are the two best teams right now in the in the conference. Yeah, yeah, I I'd say so. Honestly, I, I do think uh, the 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 squad will be ready. I, I know. Um, Mateus Rojas and No Allen spoke with the media a couple of days ago, and and they mentioned that the team is preparing for this, and obviously they want to uh, erase the poor result that they had, you know, six one a, a couple of weeks ago, and and naturally there's a a competitive element there, but yeah, I think the game will be big in a sense that um you know they can clinch a playoff spot, but ultimately you know you want you know these guys are fighting for supporter shield and ultimately just helping and and, and getting Messi fit and ready for the playoffs, so. Yeah, it'll be a big game in regards to just the playoff picture and, and you know, obviously getting one over um, in Cincinnati again. And if they win, they, they clinch that spot as well. So, yeah, I think it'll be it's a, a message because if you beat them without Messi and you come back and they're like, oh, God, OK, so we got them on that one and now they got us without Messi. And then if you run into them in the playoffs with Messi, then, you know, they're, they're going to go, oh, crap. Now, now, now they've got Messi. Now it gets ugly for us, you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, mentally, I think it's it, a, a win by Inter on Saturday sends a huge message to Cincinnati. Right, right. And, yeah, ultimately, I think that for the guys, it's the, the Kunstadt playoff spot and hopefully come out with no injuries, especially as close as the team's getting to the playoff time and, and, and playoff mode. They don't want anyone, um, you know, um, just getting on another long-term injury. We, we already seen that with uh, Faku Farias and Nico Freire. So, you know, hopefully it's just to to play a clean game, hopefully get the win and, and, and qualify for the playoffs. Yeah, no, I'm with you there. So who uh, who is intermissing uh, tomorrow besides uh, Messi's? Messi's? Oh, no one. Everyone's fit. It's just, Everybody? it's just Messi. Yeah. Okay. All right, good. And how far, I mean, not that uh, it's an impossible question. I put you in a terrible question you know, position, but what, what, what do you think? Are they just pacing this thing? Because, Hey man, you're, you're in a great spot now. No need to hurry him. Let's get him ready for the playoffs. So how long do you think he's got left till, till he returns? Yeah. So for Messi, um, obviously Miami, you know, they're in, basically they're, they're, I mean, they haven't officially qualified for the playoffs, but with their, um, their points tally, you know, they're obviously going to make it. And, you know, for Messi, it's no rushing him. We saw that last season where, uh, they won the League's Cup, and then they pushed for U.S. Open Cup, and Messi just took on too much of a load at that time. And by the time they tried to push for that playoffs uh, spot, you know, the entire team was gassed. So there's there's no point in rushing him. Now, I did read a, a hero report from Ernan Kloss uh, um, from um, Argentina, I believe. I'll double-check his name so I don't get it incorrect. I we'll always want to uh, attribute the report, but yeah, uh, there were some reports saying that Messi, the the team's basically resting him and, and making sure he's fit for the playoffs and and ready for that, and and the team's been playing well without him, and and like you said earlier, once Messi gets back into the fold, it's a it's another weapon Miami has in their in their front 
in their front arsenal. So, um, yeah, it was Hernan Claus who stated that the team's uh, slowly working him towards full fitness, Messi. Um, they're they're aiming for him to get back uh, against the Union uh, around September 14th. So he'll still get a couple of regular season games under his belt if, if that's what they're targeting. But, yeah, there's no need to rush him. The team's playing okay. Just, uh, you know, they're playing okay without him, and, and they're, they're winning. Oh, they play great Messi. without him. Let's With Messi, be it's, it's better, obviously. But. Yeah, man, but they've played great without – there's no way any of us expected them – to put up the record that they've put up without Messi, really, I, I, I did not, I didn't, because yeah. it, what we had before was for the last since Tata took over, you know, this is what's actually gotten me off Tata's ass after everything because I hated to watch this team without Messi. It was like you capitulated; it was done. It was it was an automatic loss pretty much every time. Now, man, it has been. It's been my favorite stretch, Alex. I've told you this before. This has been my favorite stretch of Inner Miami's short history because you have grown up a little bit without, you know, without dad in, in the lineup all the time, you know? Yeah, and I also think that has to do a lot with Chris Henderson and, and the coaching staff uh, getting in the, the, the young players like a Redondo uh, bringing in uh, defensive reinforcements in Ferre before he got injured, then David Martinez as well. Uh, Tata doing a really good job at developing players who, you know, the fan base write it off really quickly, like Dave Gomez. Now he's uh, one of the top players and heading off to the Premier League in the winter. So I think this is just a, a, like a PSA to fans to, to let younger players develop and not yeah. rag on them too quickly. Same thing with the manager. You know, he's not going to get it right the entire time. Yes, you can criticize, which is uh, – yeah, I'll criticize them, but uh, you also have to acknowledge the good that the coaching staff has done and Definitely. the front office as well. But you know, it's a like right. Another one, another young kid, right, has uh, has been. Yeah, uh, Yannick Bright as well, who's right, a super right, draft pick. Right, yeah, right, and yeah, able yeah. to. Uh, yeah, Tata was able to develop him pretty well, and and um, hopefully, Miami doesn't lose him too quickly as well. So, um, you know. By the way, your 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 boy Ian Frey scored the other night for for Inter Miami too. Yeah, that game was a little, little, little strange. He was playing as like a, a hybrid center back, right wing back, and he did well. And and I know a lot of Inter Miami fans want him to start for the first team, and as a lot of journalists do. But you know, this is a a player coming back from three very serious knee injuries, and you don't want to put too much on him too soon. So naturally, him playing one out of every other game would probably suit him right now. Um, you know, obviously, I do think he'll get playing time as the stretch goes on and during the playoffs. But right now. Plus they're loaded. They're loaded. I mean, if they if they if they were struggling, then they might have to you know push it a little bit more. But they've got depth like they've never had before. That's the beauty of this team right now. It that, that's the reason why this stretch has been so good without Messi. This is a deep team now. Yeah, and um, that's why um, like I, I keep getting giving kudos to Chris Henderson and, and the coaching yes. staff for identifying these players and developing them and. And selling them on with you know Diego Gomez and next season as well, they're going to have an opportunity to bring in more young talent with Diego Gomez being sold on, and uh, more players are going to look at Miami as a destination where they can get to Europe and play alongside Messi, Busquets, Jordi Alba, uh, Suarez if he stays on. So it's a good time for Inter Miami, but they have obviously have to cop capitalize on that and and win some additional silver silver silverware as the season continues. Alex, it looks like uh, Messi will never play in the new stadium, huh? Oh, we don't know. Um, 2026. Um, I don't know if I should say this, but because it's more so like speculation, but right. yeah, I don't know. Let, let's see. I, I don't know if the construction will continue, to, you know, if it'll uh, get to that point where it's, you know, feasible for him to, to stay on. But yeah, every his, player. His contract will, runs through 2025, right? Yeah, but every player, when they sign, usually uh, not alone, like when they sign contracts, there's usually a club option for an additional year. For example, um, Jordi Alba, his contract ends this season, but he has a, a club option for 2025, which I imagine the club will take him up on that. And it's kind of like a an open secret. I don't want to say it wasn't explicitly written in, in Messi or Busquets' contract that they have an additional year, but usually when players sign on to something, there is a club option for an additional year. Look at Robert Taylor. Uh, when he signed uh, to the team back in uh, 2022, there was a club option for 
2025, which I believe the the team took him up upon and maybe restructured his contract a little bit so they can give him an extension. So I don't know. Yeah. Let's see yeah. if he's good enough. And by the way, the environment they're creating, Alex, is one for him to stay on an extra year because if you have the depth and you have the youth around him, he doesn't have to carry the damn thing, you know, right. all the time. And so then if he stays away from like international competition, if he retires from that and all that in 2026, if it's a season where, Hey, you know, he's not playing in leagues cup. He's not playing in us open cup. He's just going to play MLS and no international. He could do 2026. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that, that if you take off all that wear and tear off all of that. Oh, and by the way, let's not have a preseason where you travel 50,000 miles. You know, maybe that you know that might be an option too. You know that kind of stuff. And so I get it. You're trying to sell your brand and all that. And, and but if you do those kind of things, where he just has to worry about the MLS season in 2026, and he has a deep team around him where you can pace him, I, I no problem. None. Yeah, and you know, Leah. Let's see if. Um... It would be a, a marketing uh, genius for Inter Miami if they can keep on Messi Busquets uh, to, uh, until 2026 and have them open the stadium and then maybe next uh, and the stadium when it's a World Cup year as well. Miami will be hosting some games and yeah, right. that would be really good for the the, the the organization. And then heading into 2027, maybe they can go after another whale, another big free agent superstar. So yeah, I know if they can Has he retired <laughs> from, from that. Are you sure? Is he, is he going to play in the next world cup or is he done? Messi? Mm, yeah. um, he, he's not retired from the national team. I think it's just, it's really up to him. Really. Um, I'm sure Argentine journalists were a little bit closer to the, the, the national team will know a little bit better, but um, yeah, you know, like you said, Messi is, is, his quality never really dips and, Obviously, physically, you know, he'll, he'll start to decline a little bit in injuries, but his uh, technical technical ability and, and football and IQ is still there. So if he wants to play in, until 2026, he doesn't have anything to prove anymore. So, but, you know, if he wants to, no one's really stopping him, really. No, I'm with you there. All right. So uh, what's uh, what's your prediction for uh, for Saturday? I don't know. I think Cincinnati, they're really good on the road as well. So, Shit. but Miami will, will want to to get their lick back from that 6-1 loss. And and, and Miami, they, they had a, a pretty long layoffs, as, as did Cincinnati from the League's Cup. So, but Miami's really good at home, and, and they'll feel more comfortable there. So I do think Miami will, will push for a win. I'll say I'll say 3-2 in favor of Miami. I think Cincinnati will get their goals, uh, but Miami, they're they're really comfortable at home. And and even without Messi, they're able to score. With, you know, Matias Rojas, Suarez, Gomez, they're they're in really good goal scoring form right now, and Redondo as well. Uh, God, even though he's Redondo's in Redondo's energy, Jesus, he's like he's the energizer bunny, dude. He is yeah, Redondo. Yeah. Yeah. God. Yeah. He is active. Wow. That's why they went out and, and got him. You know, uh, um, he's a Love highly touted prospect, and you know he's capable of playing that that deep lying midfield role and. He's also been uh, tactically evolving into playing a bit of a, a central midfield role where he gets up and scores a little bit. So, um, yeah, a great I signing. Just love, I just team. love his never say die attitude. He never gives up and he leaves every ounce of energy out there. And I, I love that. And this team has, you know, this team has more athleticism, has more youth, and it has even more speed on the outside because, my Lord, they were. They were slow as molasses a few years back. You remember? Yeah, yeah, and I think that's why a lot of uh, Inter Miami fans from the you know the OGs who were there and in, in, in 2018 when the team got announced and in 2020 during the COVID year, you know, they remember the days when they had Diego Alonso and the team was playing really well, slow and lacks of days of football and and yeah. you know to see the change now when you have a, a manager like Tata who can you know does have his his faults but i would say a, a, a better coach than what Miami had previously and they have obviously have better players now so um yeah right now as a journalist covering it to see the difference it, it's for truly night and day and you know it's just all about enjoying the ride and, and covering it well and and giving fans the best access they they to the to this team that we're witnessing right now and yeah, it's been a, a really cool thing to cover so far. Yeah, yeah, Diego Alonso can make it on the cover of GQ. 
There's no doubt about yeah. that. That's, that's where that's where he was excelling. There's, yeah. There's, there's no, he wore a suit well, be, yeah. But... Not that won't be on the cover of GQ. He'll be no, he'll no. be on uh, coaching. <laughs> di- he'll be on coaching digest. Is where he'll be. That's uh, right. That's right. Good. All right. So tell them about the Heron's Nest so they all can subscribe. Right. The Heron's Nest is my sub stack where you can keep updated with everything in Miami. I, I do uh, player ratings, you know, three uh, takeaways usually after most matches. Uh, I've delved into a little bit of, you know, um, fandom culture. Just recently, uh, Omad released um, this really cool T-shirt that they were kind enough to send me. And yeah, it just exemplifies Inter Miami and how much they've grown as a brand. And, and you can find that in my sub stack at the Heron's Nest. And you can find my Twitter, my portfolio. I have a chat there as well where you can just ask questions if you're curious about the team or, you know, if you want to live watch the games as well. So the heronsnest.substack.com and you can find me on X slash Twitter at AAW underscore 1998. And she's a great follow on Twitter, too, because also during the game, she'll be dropping nuggets and stuff that she's seen and all that stuff and then covering practice and everything. So if you're an inner, inner Miami fan, Alex is definitely a must follow extremely knowledgeable love having her on alex have a fantastic week enjoy the football we will catch up down the line thank you thanks Orlando. thanks for having me on you got it there you go alex winley she does an excellent job please subscribe to the heron's nest and follow her on twitter at aaw underscore 1998 This is the Big O Show! This is the Big O Show!